See it from my own life. I'm giving you my mistakes and experiences. I've been Muslim for 14 years. And I will be dealing with apostates and some of them will come back to Islam. I'll be dealing with non-Muslims and, and they'll come to Islam. And I'll give them an answer that is so convincing. But when I'm giving it, I'm not convinced. <laughs> and I'll be thinking to myself, I just gave him a really good answer. But I, I, I'm, I'm feeling something here. What's going on? And for me, I realized it had nothing to do with the intellectual answer. It was to do with what was going on here. I neglected dhikr for months. Neglected dua for months. You neglect your sunnah for months. These are things that protect your heart. These are things that protect your heart, brothers and sisters. The sunnah, the tahajjud, the reading of the Quran are things that protect your heart. If you neglect them, then your protection of your heart is gone. And you have a very thin shield, right? My own experience as someone who deals with this on a daily basis, travels the world and deals with people with doubts and deals with people who are apostates. I've seen this within me, within me that I have doubted, not because my mind was in doubt or I doubted Allah's existence or the fact that He deserved worship, but there was something awful going on here. That's the point. And wallahi, 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 you maintain your dhikr in the morning and the evening, sincerely, as best as you can, your doubts are gone. My own experience, I'm not saying I maintain dhikr all the time, okay? May Allah pro protect me from, from, from nifaq. But I've seen it from my experience who engages on the front line on these ideas. I would speak the haq, but sometimes my heart would be a bit wavering. What's, I'd be thinking, what's going on? And I always realized, you idiot Hamza, you're destroying your own soul. Where is your dhikr in the morning? Where is your going to Fajr in the morning in the masjid? Where is your dhikr in the evening? Where is your dhikr doing it sincerely and properly? Sometimes we abuse dhikr. Read the book from an nawawi in Kitab al -Afkar. Read it. We know sometimes after salah we're like, Subhanallah, 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 Khalas. I call this AK-47 dhikr. Yeah, it's true. We abuse, there's no meaning, there's no ruhaniya, there's no, there's no love in it. And now we, he talks about this and he says, do dhikr slowly. When you say subhanallah, feel subhanallah. When you say alhamdulillah, it means alhamdulillah, you're feeling it. You're not thinking, alhamdulillah, oh man, what a terrible life. Alhamdulillah, oh, I've got no blessings. Alham you know, do you see my point? We say one thing, we're feeling another thing. Try and get your state of being in with those words. Try your best. And do it with ihsan, do it with excellence, do it, with, do it properly. You could do it walking as well, you know, sometimes we have to go back to work, do it on the way. SubhanAllah, 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 you know, glory be to Allah, transcendent is Allah, Alhamdulillah. You know the other du'as, Raditu bilayhi rabban, wa bi islami deenan, wa bi muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and I am content with Allah as my Lord, with Islam as my religion, with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as my Prophet, you know. Bismillah alladhi la yudurru ma'a asmihi shay'un fil ardi wa la fi samai wa hu samil alim. Right? In the name of Allah, with whose name nothing in the heavens and earth can harm. And believe that's true. All of these du'as are about your, your, your conviction, your iman, your protection. I'm telling you, do it. Maintain it and you see changes. And even the brothers around me see those changes. They could say, Hamza, you ain't done dhikr for a week. You could just see it in the face. My wife sees it all the time. But she says it a bit more offensively. She says, Shaitan's got you today. <laughs> that's what she says. Shaitan's on your face and, and we have that in code. She knows what she knows. She's like, you haven't been doing your dhikr, you've been mucking about. You're being a naughty boy, come back. And especially if you're living in the West, you're doing dawah, you're involved in this commercialism, you're involved in the globalized culture. Because even the Qatar is the West now, you know. Ahlan was Ahlan West is here, 2022, yeah? They're, they're gonna be on your doorstep drinking and Prostitutes are going to come, whether you like it or not, they're going to fly in. That's what they do. Fly in prostitutes. They do it. It's business. Right? Right? <laughs> he just told me. Yeah? He did. He told me in the car today. That's what happens. Um, yeah. <laughs> so the point is, this is going to happen. Protect your heart. Maintain the dhikr. And, 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 I, and I believe if you do this, and I've seen it. You know, here's the proof. I had a question. I answered it, but I wasn't convinced here, but I was convinced there. When I started doing my dhikr again, I was convinced here and I was convinced there. Wallahi, honestly, absolutely. I'm giving you my experiences, I'm putting my heart on the table for you, because I love you. Protect your heart. That's it. 
90% of the doubts are spiritual. Honestly. Even just reading the Quran, even if you don't know the meaning, you don't understand Arabic, just read it. It's still a shifa for you. It's a shifa, it's a healing. Just read it. Just read it. You know, and I even noticed this. You know, sometimes when I read the Quran, I'm more like more timely with my Isha. Right? If I don't read the Quran that day, get a bit lazy. I'll push it a bit more. I've got work to do, you know? And you just see these correlations, spiritual correlations between what you do and what happens to your life. And you just learn from experience. So please, brothers and sisters, Wallahi, maintain, protect your heart. You know, most of doubts are based on spiritual issues.